Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming. A show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode, we are continuing with our playthrough of uh, the Peloponnesian War, 431 to 404 BC, published by Victory Games, designed by Mark Herman from way back in the early 90s, as you can see there on the back. Um, the Victory Games kind of deal. So, now last time we basically our whole video focused on the operations and um, combat phase. So this time around we're going to be focusing on the rest of the turn and also setting things up, showing you how the mechanism works to determine whether you as the player are going to be switching sides or not, uh, and then actively playing the opposing side. So, next step in the turn is the rebellion phase. Okay, now this particular game so far, we do have some rebellion issues. So let's take a look at that here and then we'll focus on what happens with some of them. So we do have a rebellion down here just in, oh, see, years ago when I was teaching and I did the ancient, ancient Greece, I had, um, I had a student whose parents were Greek and I had the mom gave me a whole list of how to pronounce all these things and I don't know what I did with it. Uh, I think, I think that was Evo, 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 I think is how you pronounce it, Evoa or something like that. But anyway, we got that one rebellion there, which is a problem. Then we're going to pan up here to the north. There's another rebellion still hanging out from the first time around. The first turn, the uh, Spartan strategy was to cause rebellion. They caused a rebellion there, weren't able to support it, but they were able to cause it. And then, of course, the most important rebellion of all, way up here in the north, the connection to the Black Sea at Byzantium, the city on the Golden Horn, as it was called eventually, when it was eventually became Constantinople. So, first thing you do is figure out if rebellions have been crushed. Now, any rebellion that's in the zone of influence of a unit to which the space was originally friendly is crushed. Now, of course, naval units have a ZOI of two spaces. So that's why I brought this naval unit up here to Byzantium, because now I can go ahead and crush those rebellions. Okay? So, crush and crush. So, that's the end of the line there for that. Now, moving back over here, we have got this rebellion up here. And we're going to have to take a look and see where it goes. Now remember, a hoplite unit only has its own influence in the space it's in. So that's why this rebellion continues to exist. So now what you end up doing is, oh, actually, you know what? Oh, I missed that the first turn. Well, this is good, because this is part of why I'm doing this, is for teaching purposes. This cavalry unit here, actually, uh, let me check here. Actually, you know what? I may have been right the first time. I'm checking the line here, and the line that is going across t from the mainland over is a land space. Okay, so since the cavalry has a ZOI of 1, this rebellion is actually crushed too. So I missed that the first time around. I mean, you know, but that's just part of, you know, gaming. I mean, let's face it, especially when you're playing by yourself. It's hard to stay on top of everything all the time. And, of course, you know, accidents and mistakes happen in history all the time. So me, I mean, you know, when I was younger, I, I, I was a little more OCD about that kind of stuff and how does it impact the game as it totally screwed everything up and now it's just like dude you know what if it happens every once in a while it happens okay so let's go down to here now with this rebellion now this rebellion okay does not come within the zone of influence of any Athenian units they're way down here okay so this one we'll see if it will spread all right to other places now if it's trying to spread to a space that has a zone of influence of a friendly unit, you get to add two to the die roll. Otherwise, you need a six. So in other words, rebellions don't necessarily spread very fast unless, of course, you know, they're being supported or stoked, if you will, by one of the sides. So we'll just go ahead and start with this connection up here. 
and basically we have three, so we could change this ravage space into a rebellion one. So let's take a look here. So we have a three, another three, and last roll, a two. Okay, so none of these are going to go into revolt against the Athenian Empire, so the rebellion will just hold on to that one space and not be able to expand at this point in time. So that's that from there. Now there's no rebellions in the Spartan territory, so we don't have to worry about any rebellion expansion there. All right, now time for the administrative phase. So this, of course, is where we're collecting the dough, so to speak. All right, now, both sides have a set amount of uh, money as well, too. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to check on the first turn. It wasn't really possible, but I'm just trying to double check here and see. Uh, the helots, of course, were the slaves that worked uh, for the Spartans. I just need to make sure that they haven't gone into revolt as well, but I don't think... They are. No, there's not enough places. Yeah, I don't have I don't have enough Delian forces down there. It has to be actually occupied. So but there is the Helot Rebellion you have to be aware of too if you're the Spartan player. Um, you know, or you can play this game two player, by the way, too. There are rules for it. Okay. So again, we basically end up with a set number of talents. So Athens always gets thirty five hundred, Sparta gets twenty five hundred. Okay? Now Again, as I said before, this line of communications is critical up here into the Black Sea. Because if the Athenians do not have that line of communications, they have to subtract 1,500. So actually they end up with less income than the Spartans. So if you're the Athenians, you definitely want to get that open. Now if you're the Spartans, and can somehow sneak a fleet up there and cut that off, you know, happy days are here again kind of thing. All right. Okay. Now, Sicilian revenue, if Sicily ever comes into play, that is also a possibility. Two. Okay. All right. Now, let's go ahead and collect that money. Now, when we're collecting money, though, we have to subtract 50 talents for every space that's occupied by the enemy or is ravaged. Okay. Or in rebellion, for that matter, too. So let's start with Athens, because that's going to be pretty easy to do here. We've got one, two spaces here, and yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. Yeah, okay. So that's 100 off of them. So instead of 3,500, they'll get 3,400. So one, two, three, five, fours, or nine. So the coffers are very nice and full for the Athenian Empire. Now the Spartans have a bigger problem, a much bigger problem. Okay, you got lots of spaces that, um, oh, I forgot Panactus. So we take another 50 off for that. One second, make that adjustment. Okay, all right. Now, back to the Spartans' woes. So let's start counting up spaces that the Spartans will have to subtract here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, uh, twenty, twenty, twenty. So that's basically ten, which is going to turn into another 500 for them to be taken off of their money so they're only going to get 2,000 out of that I did my math right right yeah, 10 spaces 20 spaces cut into half by 10 and then each one's 50 yeah that's 500 okay so only 2,000 is all they're going to get only quote unquote but again in the long run that could make a big big difference okay now strength point construction phase now typically with the player side you can choose whatever you want to build it's up to you and once you build them you place the units so keep this in mind you place them by the the going home table here okay as far as that goes you can only spend 600 talents each time so there is a cap so you kind of can be able to throw every single strength point back onto the board here at all all right so let's start with the athenians now i feel like i was in pretty good shape here with Fleet-wise, I don't think I need any more fleet. What I do think I need is more hoplites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build two Athenian ones, which of course will end up going in Athens naturally enough, and then one allied hoplite as well. So that'll be 600. I'll deduct 
off my income here. Okay, so, and of course if you haven't already um, pieced it together, there basically isn't any stacking limits in this game. Now the hoplite, the allied hoplite, let's see where it's going to go here. Okay, so Athenian ally, the first one goes to Amphipolis. Amphipolis is way up here. Okay, on the road to Byzantium, which makes sense. Okay. But again, I can march up there, pick them up whenever and stuff. Now, for the non-player side, if the enemy, <coughs> excuse me, lost any forces last turn, you basically are going to rebuild those lost forces. If there's more um, forces lost, then the three strength point limit, which basically that's what the 600 talents is, you can build three strength points of whatever in any combination, then you have to choose randomly which ones to do here and stuff. Now, if the non-player... Um, so it doesn't say anything here. The non-player side may only build units the same kind, the same number as those which were lost. So, they didn't really lose anything last time. So they're not going to build anything, it looks like. I don't see anything as basically talking about what you do. It doesn't say anything. If you didn't lose anything, okay, so that's that. All right, moving on now to Armistice and Surrender Phase. Okay, first of all, Bellicosity Adjustment. So now we're going to see... Okay, what happens here, what impact we're going to have. So the Spartans have a strategic confidence index of zero. So, of course, that's not going to change their bellicosity, which is five. The Athenians have an SCI of one, so their bellicosity is going to drop from ten to nine. Now, you can increase, but it's much harder to increase, because basically what you have to do is take whatever your number is, let's say four, and have it, which would be two, and you move two spaces. You always round down. So, of course, naturally, if you only have a positive one, you're going to get nothing out of it because, of course, that rounds down to, um, you can't, it rounds down instead of up, so you won't go back up to the whole number there. Okay? So, we've gone, we've gone ahead and we've done what the SCI index said. Okay? Now, we have to total the number of league and, um, League spaces that are ravaged in rebellion, occupied by the enemy, okay, and divide by 10. And that's the value that comes down. Now, if you remember before, okay, with Athens, Athens had less than 10. So, and we're rounding down again. But Sparta actually had 20 spaces altogether. So that's going to actually affect their bellicosity by 2. So their bellicosity is now going to drop down to 3. So Sparta is in bad shape here. Things are not looking good for them at all, okay? Surrender segment, okay, home space is controlled, either Athens or Sparta, which is not the case, and bellicosity is zero. Well, that's not the case, but again, the Spartans are starting to end up in bad shape. Now, if both sides bellicosity, which of course this will happen later in the game more often, uh, or more likely, I should say, if both of them have a bellicosity of six or less, then there is the armistice procedure. The armistice procedure is basically, um, from what I understand, with the rules, it's basically like the Nicaean peace, because if Nicaeus is, is the commander that's involved, or was one of the commanders of that turn, it can affect things, how long the peace lasts. So basically, you only do that if both sides have six or less on their bellicosity, which is not the case right now, because although Sparta has uh, three, Athens is actually sitting at nine. Okay? And then once you've done all that calculations and stuff, then you remove all the ravaged markers. So let me go in here and let's yank out all these ravaged markers. There's lots of them. Okay, and of course, don't worry, there's a ton of them provided with the game, so it's all good. Slide these guys off the map here. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that rebellion marker there, of course, because that rebellion has not been crushed yet, although it's obviously not in a strategically important space like Byzantium was, so I just kind of left that one alone. I didn't really worry about it. Okay, now, once you've done that, then you move the game turn marker. So we're going to move up here to turn three and go back to the beginning of the turn. So, here at the start of turn three, we have the political phase. Okay, so the side determination. So basically now, you have to try to switch sides, okay? If the strategic confidence index, so not the velocity, but the SCI, okay, 
if it is zero or a positive number. You're going to roll a die, add that, and then end up switching sides if it's six or better. Well, actually with Athens, this is negative one. So I'm not going to end up switching, oddly enough. Even though Athens is way ahead on the bellicosity, um, I'm not going to be switching sides here. And again, I admit, you know, with my approach to the game, my tweak that I do, this is a danger that can happen because it's not the bellicosity that determines whether you're flipping sides or not. It's all about the SCI. And for this particular one, because the Spartans did win the battle that went on there in the siege, they were able to make Athens have a negative SCI, so I'm not going to be switching sides here, okay? Now we have the random event segment. So let's roll a dice, see what we get here for a random event. So the random event is a 9, and the random event table is on the inside of the folder where the uh, post-combat movement table is at. So let's open this up. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, so, number nine. So, King Paradoxus of Macedon changes sides, okay? So, Palo and Macedon change sides. Athenian and Spartan SPs are removed to home spaces. All allied SPs are converted to the other side. And this can happen ad nauseum, okay? So, that means all that cavalry that was up there in Larissa, right? Now, Pella and Macedon, sorry, not Larissa, but up here in Pella, this one strength point is going to flip over. Now, of course, that could be an issue, trying to travel through there now. So, I mean, for Athens, it's kind of a minor inconvenience, so, yeah, It's kind of more random than the sign of a, eh, at this point in time, okay? Now, the Dealing League Rebellion segment. Now, this is a little more serious, okay? If the Athenian SCI is zero or negative number, I did have negative one, then we're going to have a rebellion in the Delian League. So, people get rowdy. Got to keep that empire under control. Let's see where it's going to be this time. If I'm lucky, it'll be a place where it'll be easy to quell and not have any problems. So I rolled a four. So again, for this particular thing, it's just like if you rolled a random event eight here. Okay, if you see the oligarchic rebellion. So, this is going to be, oh, that's crazy. The rebellion is going to be in Byzantium. Well, I already have a fleet there. So, basically, it's not going to be an issue. Let me see if I even place it. Oh, let's see. Okay, so actually, I have to generate a space that is not, it says here, because Byzantium is, is occupied. So, now I drop down to the next possible spot which is already in rebellion that's the one that didn't spread last time for us so now we're going to Ephesius and if I remember correctly Ephesius is on the Asia Minor coast here let me take a few seconds to look no nope. I'm not finding it right away so but again the Gazette here is awesome. So we're looking for Ephesius 7C. Right there it is. So here we go. So C7. Bingo. No, I was looking in the right area. There it is. Okay, so here's Ephesius. So we'll go ahead and focus on this area again. So, you know, so you see how all this works. So now potential rebellion. Now once you place the marker there and to see, oh, actually, you know what? That might not work either because there's these fleets here. That's two spaces away. Ah, let's see. All occupied by. So actually, I can place it there. Okay. But it can't spread to a space that's occupied by an enemy force. So it's not occupied. Now, later on, if Sparta does not support this rebellion, then that naval unit will be able to crush it when we get that bar. But for right now, Let's see if they get all rowdy and where they go. So here we go. There's a lot of spaces here that connect, ooh, to Ephesius. And look at that, right off the bat. Somebody's about it. Let's see. Nope, nobody there. Uh, let's see. Down here. Nope. Nothing there. And we got one more spot to look at. Oh, 
Well, 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 well. The immortal words of James Brown. Well, well, well. Alright, so. We did have the rebellion spread over here to Ephesius. Now, the good news is I do have a fleet already in place to do a zone of influence. The bad news is, of course, if the Spartans decide to send anything over, and of course, obviously, if I was actually playing this as the player side active, this would be a golden opportunity to really mess things up for the Athenians. But as it stands, well, I won't be able to... Let's see, that is... Yeah, I won't actually be able to crush it with this fleet. I'll have to get somebody over there to deal with that problem if I want to get rid of it. Okay, so... That's that. Alright, so the Delian League was a little looser than sometimes I think it's portrayed in other histories and stuff. So we got the Delian League done. And now we do the leader selection segment. So, reach into our lovely cup. We got a cup for each group of leaders. So the first leader for this time around I choose is for Athens. Thassilus, I think that's how you pronounce that. He'll be ready to roll. He's pretty decent. As you can see, he got a 1 and a 1. So he's, you know, pretty competent individual. Pretty competent strategos. And for the Spartans. Oh, oh they have Bersetius. So whatever they're going to do for their first operation. And remember, both sides are always guaranteed their first operation. After the first operation, then it's kind of potluck so to speak okay so he'll be there ready to roll too all right okay all right so we did the leader selection segment now strategic planning phase <coughs> now for the player side you can basically do whatever you want I mean you know you can move units around do whatever you know no big deal okay for the non-player all right side if the SCI was negative okay or let me check if it's zero two. I know if it's a negative number. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. If the non-player side is positive and didn't switch sides, it follows it. But if it's zero or negative, switch. So we're going to go over here now to the Spartans who tried to attack Athens. And granted, you could argue that, hey, you know, that was pretty successful. But... Actually, not as successful as it might seem because I gotta switch sides, switch strategies here now because it's kind of succeeding, but not exactly. So, and you can't do the same strategy twice, so we're basically looking for a two through six. And we're gonna get a six. So now, Sparta's gonna change their strategy to attack an Athenian ally, which actually is pretty good because, you know, it's decent sized forces. They could cause some problems here. And one thing in this game is if you can win some sieges, you know, as you saw from the last video, sieges will help boost you pretty quick, both economically and also militarily as well, too. So they have changed, and now we reset the SCI to zero, if it isn't already at zero, and now we are ready once again to do another operations phase. Alright, so, <coughs> tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do, just want to see what Bersidius is going to do. You know, see what the Spartans might be able to do here. I think what I'm going to do, though, with the Athenians is this thorn in my side over here. I don't want these guys over here bugging my Athenian empire. So I'm going to go ahead and activate here. And I will need four or more strength points to lay siege to this place because there is a Spartan soldier there. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll mobilize four Athenian hoplites. Let me just double check that total. Is it four or more? Or you have to have at least four. Okay, here we go. A force belonging to the side that controls the fort is four or more strength points weaker than the army. So I need one more strength point. Four or more. Okay, so I'll have to get a fifth strength point here. So I need to... Hmm, I can't make change. Okay, I'll just take one cavalry dude with me. Have the cavalry monitor the perimeter. Okay. Now, of course, five strength points. That's a thousand talents, man. I just sucked out of my treasury. <laughs> Hear that giant sucking sound? That's what that was. That was my money. So 
So I do like the fact though that you know this game also kind of hammers home just how expensive war is because it's like you're like dang man I just spent a thousand talents to march from here to here. Yeesh. All right, so we'll move into there. Now as we move into here, of course, the Spartan force can attempt to intercept us. Even if it's the objective space, they can do so. And they did intercept us. Now, of course, the chances of a battle are only going to be an 11, because remember, you have to have 8 strength points total, and we only have 6 strength points total here altogether. So that's just not happening otherwise. So let's see. But let's see, maybe somebody lost a strength point. Who knows? Yeah, well that's lovely. So now, oh, well that's annoying. So the Spartans did roll a one. So now, I didn't need all those strength points. That's a very expensive siege is what I've just set up. Don't! Ah, such are the vicissitudes of war. Somewhere, someplace, shh, shh. You hear it? You hear that laughter? Somewhere Clausewitz is laughing going, Bwah! Look at that. Yeah. Prime example of what I was talking about. Oh, speaking of Clausewitz, I need to read the biography of him. By, um, hold on, let me see. It's right here on my shelf. By, uh, oh, Roger Parkinson. I picked it up, used bookstore, oh, probably a year ago. Too many books, too many games, too little time. So anyway, so, that was unfortunate. Now let's see here what the Spartans will do. So first things first, you gotta roll and figure out what region they're headed to. And then we'll figure out from there what place they're actually going to. So the first roll is a two. Okay, actually, you know what, let me just show you that. So you can see how this is working out. Again, I know I showed last video, but you know, for those that may not be interested or haven't seen it yet. So we rolled a two. So two is Ionia. Oh, interesting. Because that, remember, that's going to be, oh, that north, is that north? That's north of where the rebellions are. But still, this could cause more trouble here. And let's see. The second roll is a six. So, Syme, C-Y-M-E. That rings a bell too. Where in the world is that place? Oh, I see it. It's right over here. Okay, so they're going to attack the Athenian ally there. It is a coastal space. So, three hoplites, three naval forces. Interesting. All right. So, let's come on back over here to the Spartans. There they are. And we'll zoom back out here. And then we'll follow our Spartan friends as they attempt to get to there. Okay, now the three Spartan hoplite infantry, remember, don't cost me a thing because they're, well, Spartans, but it will cost me quite a bit to get these three naval units going. Okay, three times four, that's 1,200. Woo! So, that drops the coffers by quite a bit, but at this point, Sparta is kind of getting desperate because they are really, really behind as far as the war goes. All right, so let's try and find a good route for them. Obviously, they got to slip past the Athenian fleet at Piraeus, so that's a bit of a problem. Now, fortunately for them, Bersidius does have a plus two tactical um, modifier, so if they are intercepted, they do have a chance of uh, managing to get through. So, all right, so here we go. We'll start tracing our route. La, la, la. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't know how Pee Wee Herman suddenly ended up in the Peloponnesian War. La la la, la 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 la. Okay, now interception here. So let's see what happens. No, no dice. Okay, moving into this island space here, which is like a choke point for the Spartans wanting to get anywhere. Oh, the lock is holding. It's a two. All right, so here they go to here, but remember, zone of influence is two, so one, two. So the Athenian fleet, they heard the stories. They're like, dude, somebody's moving. Oh, it's another two. Holy smokers. All right, well, I got to get my ravage markers out now because those bad boys just slipped through. All right. 
So, Ravage. Ravage. Now, let me see where I'm going to go next here now. And i got to try and slip past these dudes over here at Chios. This is my next problem. I'm trying to get to... Um, well, here, I'll show you where I'm going. Because uh, I know I said I found it. Boom! Right there. I'm going to use my red block. So I'm trying to get to there as the Spartans are very appropriate red, right? Let's see. Well, again, the shortest path would seem to be here, 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 here. So I'm going to try and go right past that fleet. That's right. You know what? Sometimes you got to grab the bull by the horns and challenge him. So, come here, you Athenians. Come get some. Now, now I brought... Okay, I'm just bringing in too many people. Now I brought Duke Nukem in shortly after Pee Wee Herman. Okay. So here we go. Right into here. Now again. Whoops. Sorry. Two spaces. One, two. So they will indeed be able to potentially intercept. Although the guys at Piraeus, well, we saw what they were doing. Sleep at the wheel. Holy cow! What is the Athenian fleet doing? Nobody. Athens or her allies. Nobody is paying attention. Who is minding the mint? Unbelievable. So, and once again, the Spartans doing their best impression of the Commodores. Stay home! Holy cow! This is crazy. Look at this. Look at this. I just start putting these on the map as like following the path here. Let's get over here and zoom in a little bit because this is just, this is crazy. Oh my goodness, so that's a two. Alright, so now the Spartans are going to boldly sail right past Chios. Woo! Here they go. Is anybody paying attention? Hey! Well, my Pink Floyd question was answered. Is there anybody out there? Yes, there is. Okay, so we do have a four. So let's see what kind of chaos may come out of this skirmish. Woo! Almost a battle. Okay, but we're not going to have eight strength points. That's not going to happen. But we did roll a ten. So that was PDC. Okay. But the in intercepting Athenian ally fleet is only one. Remember, we only have three Spartans. That's four. So, no dice. To quote Jeff Spicoli and his friends. Alright, but again, two spaces away. Could still be intercepted. No, it can't. I should go, I guess maybe now I should should flip over to try and yeah, go from one Pink Floyd to another. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, is there anybody in there? There he goes. Look at Versidious, man. He is the man. And again, ah, <laughs> you got to be kidding me, too. So he actually made it all the way to his objective. Wow. Wow. That's wow. Hokey spoons. So he's able to go there and lay siege. Well, eventually, later on. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Did not see that one coming. Usually I can't get the Spartans past Piraeus. Because Piraeus here... Well, actually, you know what? There's only two ships there. Huh. That's my own fault. I should have brought some of these ships back. But earlier in the game, whenever I did those die rolls leaving people behind, I have this whole fleet here, I should have moved it back from Corinth back over to Piraeus. That's my own fault. So, okay. Well, let's see if I can get another activation. And then I think we'll call it a day, as it were. Because I think by that, this point, you've got a good feel of how the game flows. Ooh, that was close to a five. I was going to say all those little die rolls. So I'm going to end up with a six. All right, so now the question becomes, should I go after my new friend, Presidious? I think I'm pronouncing that right. If not, I do apologize. Who do I got? Uh, Thras, Th Th Thras Lobos, I think is the guy's name. Okay, so I could go after him, and maybe I should, oh, but, well, actually, that's not a bad idea, because then if I go after and get the Athenian ships that are in Corinth, hmm, 
See, then I can basically sail back because I wouldn't be able to sail across the Isthmus of Corinth there, I don't think. Hmm, that's a good question, actually. I might have to look that up. I may have to stop here because I'm not exactly 100% sure. Let me see if I can quickly find that. Because, of course, the shortest route would be across the isthmus there. Um, which, basically, what they used to do was take the ships and put them on rolling logs and roll them across, if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. Long Wall of Athens. Um, I'm just trying to see here on the general stuff here with the map. If there is anything... I know there is something about Corinth. I just can't remember. As long as the map key is it. Let's see. Corinthian Isma C rules. Well, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm not sure where to see it right now. Let's look under movement. Let's see. Here we go. Corinthian Isthmus. Alright. Can move across the Isthmus of Corinth. Uh, if the moving side controls both spaces. So technically, technically, and again, this is one of the things where I hope in this new edition they'll, they'll kind of clear this up. So technically now, if I want to go get those fleets, I have to go the whole way around the Peloponnese, which means I can ravage all those spaces, which means I can basically break Sparta, I think, here on the third turn. Um, it is theoretically possible I could pull this off and end this thing right now. So you know what? Hey, it's war. I mean, yeah, okay, I could go ahead and <coughs> do a different operation and postpone this one if I wanted to. Um, and of course, you know, playing solo, you can always just make two choices and roll a die, too, and be like, okay. You know, again, what I mentioned last video, pretend the Daction channel and stuff is going on, the political fighting, and hey, here's the way this goes. But, strictly by the rules, I can get away with this. So, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate four Athenian hoplites. Four times two is eight. That's 800. So I do have to be careful here now, though. Uh, let's see. Although the Athenian treasury is in pretty good shape. Okay. So now we're going to march over here to Corinth. And along the way, we'll ravage these two spaces here. Again, causing more trouble. For the Spartans. So they better hope that their little um, adventures here pay off. Because if not, I should be able to win this just based on ravages alone. And I'll pick up some of my fleet here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to pick up all of my fleet. So two, or so four times four, that's 1,600. So I'm going to spend another 1,600 talents again. A whopping amount of my budget. So let's see, 14 minus 6 equals 8. That drops me all the way down to 2,800 talents. And I'm going to go ahead and continue on my way here, ravaging the Peloponnese as I go, because I'm basically going to sail here, ravage this place, sail on this way, come down around here, where, oh, this should have had it removed, but it's, you know, it's back for obvious reasons. Now, again, there's nobody to stop me. Because there's, well, there's basically almost no Spartan fleet, allied or otherwise. So I just can keep sailing around here. I need some more Ravage markers, so I'll just pause there and grab some more out of the tray. Well, whew, this situation is U-G-L-Y, ain't got no alibis, ugly. Okay. Yes, yes, it's ugly. Alright. So now I'll continue to sail up through here. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. Boom. Boom. I still need another Ravage marker. Hokey spoons. Hmm. Did I stop in Piraeus and pick up some more? I got four. They only have three. Nah. Okay, so now I'm going to come out through here, through again this choke point at uh, Aegina, I think is how you pronounce that. So here, ch -ch -ch, past Chios. Now, since I'm coming here into Chios, remember, they can try to intercept two spaces away. So let's see if they're able to pull that off. Here we go. No, they're not able to. 
So now I'll close in on them here. And again, they have a chance. And again, they fail. And now I'm coming right at them, breathing down their neck. And again, they failed to intercept. It's a three. Okay, so I don't know if that'll end up being good or bad for them in the long run. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Now, if Sparta wants another one, remember they got to roll a die. The non-player side, it's a five or a six to continue with operations here. So let's see how the Spartans make out. <sighs> No, it's actually a three. So, so, I'll tell you what, I'll end this video by letting you know what the Spartans are going to be up to. So let's draw the new leader. And the new leader is... Ring. Hmm. Well, he's not much of a strategist, as you can see there. He's got a negative one rating. <laughs> That's all right. He's a good tactician. He's got plus one. So let's see where they're headed to to attack an Athenian ally. And I'll mark it for you on the map. And that's where I think we'll call it quits. So, the first table, they are on their way to the Hellespont. Ooh. ay 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 Where in the Hellespont? Let's find out. So, Hellespont. Sigium. Hmm, I don't know where that is. Well, I know where the Hellespont is, so let me take a look over here quick and see if I can spot said place. There it is. Ooh, well, I'll say this much for them there. Definitely being consistent going over there. Okay. All right. So, final thoughts on this. Um, I am looking forward to the new edition. I will say that, an edition that has been, um, you know, 30 years, basically, in the making. And again, according to the latest... Um, GMT info on their website. It should be out sometime next year, which makes sense because Mark Herman's stuff is always um, sought after. And quite frankly, I've enjoyed most of his designs. There's been a few of his designs on Golf Strike I felt was a little too detailed for my taste. But, you know, Washington's War. Uh, I have Pericles over on the shelf. Uh, I feel like I have some other Mark Herman designs too. Oh, Churchill. I have Churchill. I'm looking forward to Versailles 1919. I don't know if that's coming out next year or not. Um, I think it is, actually. But So I do have uh, you know a handful of Mark Herman stuff. And when I used to play set-piece battles, I did enjoy the Great Battles of History uh, series, which I know he had a hand in um, as well. So, my point being that uh, I'm looking forward to the new edition. I like this game. It's got good swings. It's not overly detailed or complicated with the strength points. Uh, with the strategy matrix, I think it's all a very clever design. It, it runs very smoothly once you get used to it. Um, and obviously you can bang out turns a lot faster than I do in these videos. But then again, you know, I'm explaining things too as well. So, uh, I'll just end by saying this. Uh, this has definitely been worth my while. Um, uh, at one point, I actually had a, a track down a second copy because um, I was kind of wearing down the counters on this one a little bit, which I've only done with a few games, so that says a lot right there. But, um, you know, this is the kind of game that I try to play once a year. Now, that doesn't always happen. Um, I actually haven't, <laughs> I haven't played this game since 2015, so it's been three years since I last played this, which that's one nice thing I like about Board Game Geek and being able to record your plays is you can go back and, you know, you can be like, oh, yeah, I just played this then. Or, you know, you can have a Scooby-Doo moment where you're like, Reggie, read your ears. So, which is pretty much what happened to me the other day. Uh, I'll close by saying that if you want more detail on this, be on the videos on Board Game Geek, I have posted both a written review and a written session report I did oh, a long time ago. I want to say maybe seven, eight years ago at that point. That was when I did them, but you can check those out if you want some more detail or if you'd like to see a session report, a, a series replay done in fair fair amount of detail. I did I did list things uh, out. It's pretty lengthy, but you know if you're looking for like a uh, the old style general, you know replays and stuff, it definitely would be up your alley. So I do recommend this if you like the ancient world, if you like Mark Herman's designs. 
Um, oh, I know where I was going with that before about Mark Harmon. <laughs> it's getting kind of late, and my boys were tuckering me out today. You know, three, three year old and three month old will have a tendency to do that to you. Um, well, my point being that the new version of this game is already over a thousand pre orders, so including myself, um, because I have loved this, but I'm also very, very curious and very interested in getting the new version uh, of the game. So if you like Ancient Warfare, particularly Ancient Greece, you should definitely check this out. Uh, this is the conflict that you don't see given a whole lot of attention to, although I do know there are a handful of games about it. But prior to, you know, back in the day, this was one of the few games that actually covered this conflict um, in detail. And again, I can't recommend highly enough, if you're interested in the history of this uh, conflict, I cannot recommend the Kagan books highly, highly enough. Again, if you want, you know, a nice overview and analysis of, of things, the origins of the war and the preservation of peace is an excellent book. If you want just kind of a good narrative overview, there's a single volume that he did. And then if you really like Ancient Greece and you're really into it, he did, I believe there was three volumes. I don't think there was more than three. But he did a three-volume set, very detailed, very interesting, though, too, covering the whole Peloponnesian War. So you can also check that out as well. And I personally find his style to be, um, you know, both scholarly and readable at the same time, which is not always an easy trick to pull off. So, again, Peloponnesian War, a lot of fun, have a lot of good time, have had a lot of good times with this game over the years, so I do recommend it, and if you like, again, if you like what you saw here, I would recommend signing up for the new version, because the old version, um, one of the problems is that it's very expensive on the secondary market. Maybe not so much now, because the new version's coming out, but still, you know, you might as well go for the new version if you don't have the old version. So, if you like what you saw on these videos... Head over to the GMT website and pre-order. Get on the bandwagon. Jump up. I'll scooch over and make some room for you. So, this has been Tim Korchner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching. And want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, uh, happy holidays to you. Whatever holidays you do are, are part of your tradition and your, and your culture. And a Happy New Year to everybody, and I will see you again in 2019, because I don't think I'll be doing another video between uh, now and then with all the, the family things that will be going on um, this year. My three-year-old is, he just had his birthday a few weeks ago, and he is definitely into the, when you hand him a present now, unlike last year, it's very funny to me, unlike last year, this year, all you have to do is hand it to him and be like, this is for you, and whoosh, uh, wrapping papers off. You know, last year you still had to help him, but this year, mm -mm, man, he is on it. And he's he's recognized Santa Claus too on um, different things, movies and TV and stuff. So it's it's cool. It's it's um I'm kind of digressing here, I guess, but it is kind of fun because you know those things that you don't necessarily remember yourself when you were that little. Uh, one of the cool things about kids is you actually get to see that, and then you know it's kind of neat because you're like, oh man, I did that too, didn't I? Yeah, obviously did. We all did at some point. Well, in terms of, maybe not the specific example, but in terms of the general wonderment and, you know, exploration and learning about things, we all did that. So, again, thanks for watching. I will see you in 2019. Hopefully, hopefully, the next video I'll be sharing with you it will be the Pacific Tide game coming out from Compass Games. Still just says January 2019 on their website. No specific date, but I did go on Board Game Geek and on the discussion board and asked the designer, nudge nudge, do you know what day is specifically going to be released? Because I, I have been looking forward to this game um, for quite a while. So hopefully that will be the next game I'll bring to you sometime in January too. I also intend to just kind of preview coming attractions here to wrap this video up. Uh, I also intend to bring you, uh, as to some extent, I'm not sure what yet because i got to see the actual game, but I did, uh, I missed on the Kickstarter on Thunder in the East, the new Chad Frank Chadwick um, Russian Front game, because I can never get enough East Front games. I did miss out on it, but I did pre-order it through uh, one of the online gaming stores. So that should be coming out toward the end of January, and I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to sharing that with you as well. So again, thanks for watching, 
and we'll see you again next time.